Hey yo, this is Dash. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the first thing I have going in the smoker is the chicken. And I've had people ask about the foil. The whole thing is uh, when I put the foil up there, it's easier for me to clean off the foil than it is necessarily the tray. Alright, so here I have chicken thighs, and I'm just going to start putting them up there. Okay, so there you have it. That's about uh, 25 pounds of chicken, and that was 30-ish, almost 30-ish, uh, 25, probably 25 pounds of uncooked brisket. Um, so now we get this in the smoker, change gloves again, get the lower rack out, Try to get some of this extra, this residual grease and stuff off of the grate. Even though I'm primarily only focusing on over here, because that's where the heat is coming from. And I'll go ahead and get my uh, pork shoulder on. So, change gloves again. Get this thing. Oh, so here's a tip. If you're using one of these carboys or uh, bus boy bins, I line it with aluminum foil. It's, it's kind of a sometimes a waste of aluminum foil, but the aluminum foil is a lot of times easier to get up and out and clean out than these pans can be over time, uh, especially with things that that have like a paprika or other things that might be reddened, um, because what what will happen is they'll dye this container, and you'll have a good a hard time scrubbing it out. Ask me how I know. Yes, I go through a lot of these gloves. Okay, so at this point, obviously you see my brisket is uh, in the smoker, my chicken is in the smoker, and my pork shoulders are in the smoker. Now the way I oriented, oriented this, I usually keep my beef and my chicken over top of my pork for the simple reason that majority of people who eat beef usually don't have a problem with chicken. Um, people who don't eat beef or excuse me, people who don't eat beef will eat chicken, and people who don't eat pork typically eat beef, right? 
So hopefully that makes sense because anything that drips from the beef onto the pork is edible for other folks and anything that drips from the chicken is edible for those folks that eat pork too. Usually whenever I'm cooking like this, I'll do beef up front because this is where the heat is coming. The bigger pieces of meat over here where the heat is coming from. My chicken over here and then my ribs uh, usually are down here. If I'm doing anything, if I'm doing anything different like uh, lamb chops or salmon or things like that, I'll kind of adjust this slightly where I might put the chicken under here. Uh, if I have lamb or something like that, I'll put it up in one of these corners, kind of just in case to make sure that there's no cross contamination. Okay, so at this point, what I do is um, I have these wireless thermometers, okay? And you see the temperature is up over 300 degrees. What I haven't done is um, I need to throttle and what I'll do typically is I'll sit out here for a few minutes um, once I get the food into the smoker um, just trying to check the time real fast so once I get the food into the smoker I will sit out here for a few moments to watch and make sure that the smoker comes back down and uh, settles in where I need it to settle in right now the digital thermometer which the probe is over here actually so it's it's kind of getting the middle of the road um, temperature here and this is also closer to the firebox which sometimes sometimes can throw it off and it'll read slightly higher than the thermometers that are here because it's so close to the firebox but right now it's showing 320 I'm going to give it a couple moments and actually one of the quickest and easiest ways to get heat out of your smoker open a door As you can see, some of the, this is uh, like condensation, condensation coming off of the uh, this chicken and the brisket and the shoulders too, because of the fact that they are cold because they just came out of the refrigerator and it is warm inside of the smoker. So my temperature inside the smoker has come down a bit. Pulls this back up, and now again I'm going to sit down, make sure that my temperature comes right back down and settles in where I need it to. All right, so I'm back out at the smoker. We are still at Bessie, and um, I let the temperature go down just slightly. I'm cooking a little hotter and faster than I would uh, normally do because, um, again, I'm cooking a little bit hotter and faster than I normally would. One, because it's a school night, and two, because I still have to go to work in the morning. So I'm trying to get this stuff done so I can have my uh, the, the uh, meat cooked ahead of time and then what I will simply do is make sure everything is cut up um, portioned and then all I'll have to do is reheat everything prior to my event um, so let me show you what's going on inside the smoker all right as you hear because I'm cooking hotter and faster the water is actually boiling off faster than I would like but my chicken is looking good getting some good color not yet on the chicken my briskets nowhere near ready to do anything with those and the pork shoulders same thing nowhere near ready long enough to do anything with that I just really wanted to check on my chicken and see uh, how it was doing like I said I'm cooking a little hotter than I, I normally would and I wanted to make sure that the chicken wasn't getting too dark um, when it gets too dark that's the sign of a uh, a dirty fire so I wanted to make sure that my fire is burning clean I've been sitting out here with the uh, with Bessie the entire time and uh, it looks good so I'll close it back up and let it go for a little while longer all right so I'm back at the uh, smoker here and um just checked my chicken not too long ago, and because I'm chopping it up, I don't have a problem tearing it apart, or at least a couple of the breast apart to look at them, make sure they're done properly, and they are. I'm gonna take these, oh, these fell into the pan. 
take these out and let them rest. And then uh, I will come back. Actually, I need to put a glove on and then this glove on. Chicken is hot. We're just gonna get a new glove. I have also gone ahead and tipped my uh, chicken thighs and they are also done. How do you know the chicken is done? You temp it out. Look for the correct temperature to temp chicken and uh, leave a comment down below with what it is. Oh. All right, so it's been a couple more hours. Chicken is long gone in the house. Brisket and my pork shoulder are still left. I wrap my uh, my brisket and pork shoulder up. I don't usually just aluminum foil. I put them in pans. I put them in pans. It makes it easier to uh, move. So. pretty good. I'm sorry you guys are gonna have to deal with the beeping um, from the thermometer of the uh, the electronic thermometer wireless one. Here you have the pork shoulder. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these up. And they need to go back in the smoker because they're not done yet. Okay, so um, at this point, the last thing I have to do is, I gotta adjust this temperature here. Um, last thing that has to happen is uh, all, that, all that needs to happen is the food needs to just, the brisket and the pork shoulder just needs to finish. So at this point, I'm gonna crank the heat up slightly higher in the smoker um, just so I can help to speed up um, my cook again uh, like I started. And uh, it should be done in another couple hours. Yay. Get some rest now, soon. All right. I'll catch up. I'll, I'll catch you guys up when I, um, I'm ready to pull either one of the briskets out or both briskets. Excuse me. 
Okay, so, oh goodness, it's been a long night. I am uh, back in the house. I need to be at work in exactly two hours. I'm an hour from work, just about. And I still have to do something with this food. So, let's show you guys. Here's brisket number one. Here's brisket number two. The chicken is already all good and wrapped up. Here's pork shoulder and the other pork shoulders. So what I did, my wife was headed out this morning and uh, when this first came off the smoker probably about uh, an hour or two ago, I, uh, I gave her a couple of pieces uh, just because it was hot um, so she could have something decent for breakfast. But at this point, um, I'm getting ready to uh, consolidate things into uh, like one pan each for the brisket, one pan each for the uh, pork shoulder, wrap everything up in foil, put it in the refrigerator, um, and then get out of here so I can get to work. Then what I'll do this, either this evening, probably not this evening, probably I'll get up early, earth than normal in the mor tomorrow, which will be Friday. And uh, what I'll do is I'll start warming everything up um, and the first thing I'll probably warm up will be the chicken warm up the chicken cut it up and then uh, warm up the brisket and the pork shoulder at the same time the pork shoulder I'll probably do next and then I'll uh, warm up the the uh, brisket slice it up and then I'll put everything back into the, the to their respective pans and uh, finish warming everything. So I'll just basically knock the chill off of everything so I can handle it. Um, if you've ever cut meat when it's cold, it's really difficult. Um, so to avoid that, what I'll do is I'll warm it up a little bit, maybe a half an hour or so. And that'll knock the chill off of it to the point where it'll make it a little easier to work with. And um, I guess we'll pick this up um, then. <laughs> 